T.B. Joshua was a member of a white garment church. In 2011, okay. T.B.J. was Nigeria's third richest pastor, while in 2021, he was put at number nine in the world. T.B.J. spent some time in Kaduna. T.B.J. claimed that he would have been in the Nigerian army if he was not a clergyman. Things you probably didn't know about T.B. Joshua. T.B. Joshua was a member of a white garment church, the Celestial Church of Christ. He was a hitherto unknown prophet. It was alleged that it was from this vineyard that the Lord asked that he went on a 40-day fasting and prayer to prepare him for a bigger evangelism service for humanity. It was also reliably gathered the TBJ spent some time in Kaduna, in Kaduna state of Nigeria, where he was a member of the Celestial Church of Christ, Kaduna Parish too. He was also a member of this same vineyard in Lagos. TBJ met his then wife-to-be, Evelyn, for the very first time sometime in 1989 and proposed to her within an hour after they met. The rest is history. She was an employee of the Nigerian distilleries in Ota Ogun State and traveled to Egbe to visit her sister where she met TBJ in 1990. How did she meet him? Evelyn said she had gone to meet him for counseling and spiritual guidance. <coughs> TBJ's wife Evelyn was a twin. She had a twin brother who had since passed on. TBJ single-handedly funded the building and running of a school in Lahore, Pakistan, named Emmanuel School. He repeated the same feat in a rural area in Ecuador after an earthquake disaster there in 2017. The Nigeria Travel Week and TW event held in Lagos in 2018 revealed that TBJ's con received the highest number of tourists in Nigeria. The event organizers also added that SCON received more weekly attendees than the combined number of visitors to Buckingham Palace and the Tower of London in the United Kingdom. Wow! The name Balogun was actually TBJ's surname as he was simply known as Francis Balogun when he was in primary school. TBJ did not finish his first year in secondary school due to the death of the family's breadwinner, his father, Pakola Wale Balogun, who was an interpreter for the British. Sometime in 2015, TBJ was reported to have secretly purchased a $60 million Gulfstream G550 private jet, thereby joining the League of Nigerian Pastors with private jets. His was the most expensive of the four owned by the Nigerian pastors at the time. Squan denied this, but there was ample evidence to confirm it. TBJ claimed that he would have been in the Nigerian army if he was not a clergyman, but his attempt at this was foiled due to a train breakdown on the day he would have enlisted. During the Panama Papers leak, TBJ was said to have owned a company called Chilon Consultancy Limited in the British Virgin Islands in June 2006. He came into the open and publicly denied any association with the company saying, I am not a businessman and I have no business whatsoever. What God has given me is more than enough. Juno Sujuku, a director of Innocent Motors Nigeria, is a beneficiary of the prophet's big-heartedness. He was remarked that TBJ's philanthropy in such that if there were 10 men like him in Nigeria, poverty, hunger, and disease would be drastically reduced. A prominent Nigerian Muslim cleric, Sheikh Husaini Yusuf Mabera, who owns an Islamic school, threatened to drag TBJ to court for describing Jesus Christ as God. The threat did not materialize in court. TBJ has authored at least four books, namely The Mirror, The Step Between You and the Cure, Daily Time with God, and What the Future Holds. TBJ was born in OOC, a neighborhood in Arigidi, Akoko, Northwest Local Government Area. 
in Ondo State of Nigeria on 12 June 1963. TBJ stayed in his mother's womb for about 15 months, that is, six months longer than normal. My People Football Club, a football club TBJ started in 2009, was part of his efforts to help the youth. Two members of the team, Sonny Emmanuel and Ogen Yonazi, played for Nigeria Golden Eagles in the 2009 FIFA Under-17 World Cup. Three other players of the club were sponsored abroad to play professional football. TBJ narrowly evaded death about three days after his birth, after a huge rock from a quarry explosion near his parents' house crashed through the roof and landed by its side, where he was laid. It missed him by mere inches. This rock crash incident led to his parents naming him Tebitokwe, a Yoruba name transliterating to mine is worthy of thanks. TBJ lived most of his life within the church headquarters. He had no known personal properties anywhere else outside his corn headquarters and the prayer mountain uh, premises. Until his death, TBJ was rejected by the two main Christian bodies in Nigeria, namely the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, and the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, PFN. The main reason being that TBJ was seen as an exorcist or a charmer. Most of TBJ's top main rivals in the clergy publicly condemned him. His most critics being Pastor Chris Okote of the Household of God Church International Ministries, who described him as a son of the devil. Others are Pastors David Oedepo of Winners Chapel, Paul Adefarasi of House on the Rock, Matthew Ashimolo of Kingsway International Christian Center, KICC, and the disgraced American megachurch leader, Ted Haggard. Others are Pastors Enoch Adeboye of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, and Ayo Urisegyefo of Word of Life Bible Church. Christian Life Church Uganda pastor Jackson Seyonga seemed jubilant as he announced TBJ's death to the congregation during the Sunday service of 6 June 2021. The former Nigerian president, the late president Umar Musa Yaradua, conferred on TB Joshua the honor of officer of the Federal Republic OFR in 2008. Less than three months of each other, two countries, Paraguay, and Dominican Republic bestowed on TB Joshua their highest national awards in August and November 2017, respectively, in recognition of his immense contributions to the growth and development of humanity. In 2011, Forbes reported that TBJ was Nigeria's third richest pastor, while in 2021, he was put at number nine in the world. TBJ had commenced a new town project comprising all modern day infrastructures and amenities, including a university, primary and secondary schools, a shopping mall, hospital, and helipad in his hometown before his death. It was believed that TBJ had planned to relocate Square headquarters and the prayer mountain to Arigidi, his hometown. Skuren's permanent site is the fourth location since the church was founded in 1987 under the link bridge between Ejibo and Ebe in Lagos State with about eight members. It moved to its present and permanent site at number one, Shegun Irefi Street, Ikotun Ebe, Lagos, Nigeria, in 1994 after using three different locations before this. TBJ was the main church cleaner for the first three years of Scorn Foundation. He cleaned the toilets and helped in the construction of the church buildings. TBJ regularly traveled by Okada, a motorcycle taxi commonly used in Nigeria and other third world countries around the world between the church and the prayer mountain for many years when his ministry first started. TBJ and Evelyn are blessed with three female children. The first daughter, Sarah Oida Mola, is a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria, 
a PhD holder, married to a Tanzania brand Moshi. She also passed the final bar examination and was called to the bar in New York Supreme Court. TBJ's first daughter, Sarah's wedding took place in three locations, Nigeria, Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and finally on Saturday, May 8, 2021, at a Catholic church located in Arusha, Tanzania. TBJ did not attend any of Sarah's wedding celebrations, but her mother and sisters did. TBJ's son-in-law and Sarah's husband, Bram Moshe, is a Tanzanian businessman in the tourism industry, while Sarah is a lawyer. It was claimed that Brian and Sarah gave birth seven days after the death of TBJ. The day TBJ will have been 58. This has been refuted by the family. In an interview before her father passed on, Sarah described him as a true example of humility. The best father everybody can pray to have is not what I think about him or what people think about him that counts, but what God says about him. Everybody has the right to air his own or our opinion. But God's opinion counts most. Still on her father, Sarah continued, He has given me so much. I know my dad and is a living example of how to be humble and devoted to God. Unquote. She said the words of encouragement her dad always gave her as a child was, I quote, Life is an experience. Unquote. She also said she was daddy's pet. We need your help. Were you at any time at the Synagogue Church of All Nations during the lifetime of Pastor T.B. Joshua? What was your vision there at the time? Were you a worker, observer, disciple, escort, carer, there to seek financial assistance or spiritual help? What was your first-hand experience of T.B. Joshua and his ministry? Would you like to share your experience with the world? Or are you happy with the inconsistent information you are getting on social media about TB Joshua after his death? Please help us to tell the world the truth. Let us hear from you. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth. We shall not show your face or make your voice obvious if you wish. Please call me on or text TBJ to the number on the screen. You may WhatsApp me on the same number. Alternatively, please email me at info at latv.co.uk. That is info at latv .co.uk. Your contribution may bring the truth to light. The Holy Quran says, and I quote, And do not mix the truth with falsehood or conceal the truth while you know it. Unquote. That is Surah 2, chapter 2, 42. While the Holy Bible supports this by and I quote, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Unquote. John chapter 8 verse 32. We await your call or message. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.